What's up everybody, Sam Smyers here. Today I want to show you how to make the synth to make me feel by Oscar Medke. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. And just as a reminder, please go ahead and give this video a like and please subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. This synth sound appears in the middle of the track, but I've seen on social media him posting clips of, of him playing it on either a Moog, like a big Moog synth, or sometimes he'll play it on a little keyboard. And I see a lot of comments of people asking how to make the synth sound, and I did a short video on how to make it and a lot of people seem to like it so i just came up with a way to make this in serum i don't know what synth he actually used if he was actually using a moog or if that was just something that he used in the video for the performance because i also noticed i was looking at what he was playing the notes he was playing and they were uh like a half a step off from what i was seeing because i was watching it and it looked like he was playing something like like that for the notes and then I for like that first note and then the second note was something a little weird too so it looked like it was like something where I, I just didn't really understand what he was doing so I think that was also some of the confusion that people uh, were seeing how he's playing it and they're wondering how to make this synth so uh, it maybe if you, he'll see this video and then he can comment down below uh, how he actually made it so maybe hopefully this will get to him but I um, I tried to remake it and essentially what I did is I just ran the synth sound in the section of the song where it breaks down through Melodyne and Melodyne just told me that it was a D, A, and F sharp for that first note and so you can see it tells me all the chords. There's the first chord, second chord, third chord, fourth, fourth chord. There were some bass notes being picked up so there might have been also like a bass layer but I added on another bass note. So here's what I came up with, the chords. And you can try adding in a bass note. It didn't make too much of a difference, but you also have to keep in mind that there is some velocity sensitivity going on. So the harder that you play these notes, they you can hear like that filter change. And so that's why when you look at my notes, I have different velocities for these notes and that uh, contrib contributes a lot to the sound. So these are the chords here. These are, This is the MIDI that I came up with. And you can hear it get a bit thinner at that second half. And I was just copying what he did in the section of the song where he adds like a low cut. So I was just low cutting a bit of the frequencies toward the end of that progression. Uh, just doing some automation on that low cut. So let's just see what I did. Okay, yeah, see there, I just brought up that low cut right there. So let me just walk you through the sound and it's pretty straightforward sound i think i think it was just mainly getting the keys right and the progression and then understanding how to do this velocity so when you load up serum let me just take off the effects now when you load up serum this velocity is not on so let's go ahead and bypass this and take off the filter so when you start out i didn't do anything to the voicing here i just went to this envelope Adjusted, uh, give it, give it a bit of release. So about 58 milliseconds, and then I went to my oscillator A. Just went to basic mini. Just assuming maybe he was using a mini Korg, uh, a mini Moog, and you can go in here, and that is this basic mini, which is copying, I believe, the mini Moog synth wave forms. And that's all I did for the oscillator. And then from there, you just do your envelope two, which is going to be triggering, triggering the filter. So this is my shape for the envelope too. Then what you do is you just click here, drag it to the cutoff. And this cutoff modulation is about 17%. Cutoff is about 318. Resonance is at 18. Drive is at 21%. Make sure to turn on this key tracking because when you turn on the key tracking, the frequency changes on the cutoff. So notice it says 73, but when you turn on key tracking, it says 314. I don't know why it does that, but just that's something to note. So the key tracking 
essentially opens up the filter more for the higher notes. So now we've got different things going on. We have the velocity opening up the filter cutoff if I hit the note harder, and then we also have the velocity opening up the higher we go up on the keyboard. So let's play a low note. You can hear it getting brighter as opposed to if I just have this off. You can hear how that filter isn't changing. It also visually starts to rise up the filter. You can kind of see it moving upward. So then I just added on some noise. You can't really hear the noise, but I assume that if you ever want to automate the filter, adding on some noise in this noise section will add a, a nice, like, papery sound to it. So that I just went to the micro -corg noise and level is at 15%. So really maybe not that audible, but you could you can play around with that just to give it a bit of extra texture. So let's initialize that. So after that, so now let's just play all this. Now you can hear it, it's uh, getting a bit brighter on the higher notes, but not as bright as it would be when you add in the velocity trigger. So. Then you go down to here, this velocity here, and then you just click and drag it to the cutoff there. And I just bypassed that, but the modulation I did was about 21%. And that's gonna make it a lot brighter now. So it's really just a fine dance of knowing how much modulation to put here and then where to adjust this cutoff. So you can always just add on this, modu this velocity modulation and then go into your velocity in the MIDI, adjust the velocities and then try to adjust this cutoff and then that, that will help you dial it in. So it's really just a trial and error thing. And so that's just how I came up with these modulation amounts. And this is the MGLO 24 filter, which I think is modeled after the Moog as well, the filter on the Moog. So then on, on the Moog, and I'm just going off of the Mini M, M3. I don't know what version he had, but if you look on the, like this is the M3, you do have a soft clip that you can turn on. So that's why I went into here and I added on a soft clip. Because I felt like there's a bit of drive in the sound and that is just the soft clip distortion. Go down here, soft clip. Drive at 65% in the wet at 44%. Then I felt like it just needed a bit more uh, nasaliness, which uh, I wanted to boost around the three kilohertz range. And then from there, I added on a ping pong delay. So that is a quarter note ping pong delay. And then this is a filter just filtering off the top end and also the low end and the mix is at 26% and the feedback is around 25, that's 27, but you can just eyeball it. And now with CRM2, you do have some different options for reverb. So I would have maybe done a Valhalla room reverb or you can experiment with other room reverbs. I just found one that is called the short guitar room. I feel like I've been using this one for a room reverb on a couple of recent remakes. And so let's turn this on. Just gives it a tiny, tiny bit more space. And you can also hear in the track that there is like a white noise going on. So I just added in a white noise as well on top of that really quietly. So together. you can hear that white noise on top. You could also do something like, I didn't use this in my actual remake, but I was testing out using something like the retro color where you can add on a noise. They kind of ducks underneath the chords as they play, which is pretty nice. And then you could try and add on some drive from here. and also your reverb. So I was playing around with that, but I wasn't able to get it as close using this noise thing, but that's just another option. If you wanna make a synth 
that is similar like this, then the RC20 is pretty good for adding this warm retro vibe. And for this white noise, I did have a just EQ'd it a bit and put on the utility plug in. And this compressor is on here. I guess I was trying to sidechain it as well, but didn't end up using the sidechain uh, on it. So just did some EQ to that white noise. So if you do want to grab this sound, I will put it in my Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a like. And also please subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. And if you'd like to check out MICRP setbacks, head on over to store.sansmires.com.